And a pleasant good evening to you and yours, and welcome to the Brevard Sports Network and our continuing coverage of USL2 and the Brevard SC. Caleb Brown here, along with the man, the myth, the soccer legend in my book. He is Matt Shelton. How's everybody doing tonight? Going to uh, do the national anthem here. National anthem, we'll be right back. All right, National Anthem is completed. Matt Shelton, why don't we get started by talking about the lineup for the Villages SC. Sure, so the Villages SC tonight looks like they're going to be going with a 4-3-3. Uh, uh, Matias Tepo at the, in the goalkeeper spot. Four-back set with Witter, Andrade, Laro, and Munch. In the midfield, we'll have Pedro Santos, Viega, and Ferreira. And up top, uh, Butler... Rossano and Morrow. And now the starting lineup for <laughs> your Brevard Soccer Club. And Brevard SC, three changes from the lineup uh, against Florida Elite last week. At the back, we have Noah Hawkins, who is just absolutely incredible uh, in the last game that we saw right here uh, at home at MCC. Um, the back line, um, Nathan Mefford, who came in as a substitute playing left back, did a great job, scored one of the goals, game-winning goal. Um, so earned himself a starting spot tonight. That's one of your changes. Niles Lockridge, Josh Fox, Johannes Klaus also rounding out the back four. Uh, going with the 4-3-3. Three, three. So in the midfield, we'll have Kavan Regine, uh, Sam Bailey, and Ronaldo Zakiri. And then up top, another change at the left wing spot, Gene Lewis, who was our player of the game, really came in and really added a whole lot of energy to that game against Florida Elite. Wound up getting an own goal, <laughs> you know, forcing an own goal from a Florida elite. So he's coming in and replacing Logan Collins at the left wing. Uh, Fabio Amaral playing in the striker spot. And Aiden O'Hara is coming in for Tommy Chamberlain in the right wing spot. So um, good lineup tonight. I know um, I've been looking forward to seeing Adrian O'Hara play. Um, he's been uh, – he was good, as I understood, in, in the in – the, in I guess it was the second game they played – um, but uh, was was unavailable last game, so good to see him back in the lineup. And obviously, with with Gene Lewis and Nathan Mefford coming in, really uh, sparked that last game. Hopefully, they can do the same right off the bat here as starters. Absolutely, I will say uh, I, I had one of the keys of today's game is is don't is you want to start somewhat more aggressive this game. You you don't want to let someone hang around. You 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 want to uh, assert that dominance early if you're Brevard SC. Yeah, they'll start with the ball, so hopefully they can get this ball forward and create some chances here early on. And um, So the Villages SC, only one match. Uh, they beat TBU, Tampa Bay United, 1-0 uh, in their only match. So based on um, points per match, which is how the table's ranked, they're number one. Um, but should they lose today, they go to last place, uh, the way those rankings work. Uh, Brevard SC, they're currently in second place based on points per match. Uh, first in points if they win uh, tonight. Uh, right now they're in their third. They're right in the middle of the table based on points per match. So here we go underway. Sam Bailey with the long ball down here, the left side, trying to find Aiden O'Hara. Now it's Lockridge 
pushes it in the wrong direction. A good defensive stop there from him to block the cross. Clears it on to Fabio. Back to Niles Lockridge. Over to Josh Fox. Yeah, and, and you know, last week I said they were playing in a, a 4 2 3 1. Uh, it probably was a 4 3 3 with a double pivot, meaning they're two. You know, holding midfielders to defensive midfielders, but there's just so much rotation in the top six. You know, they really, they really don't have a formation uh, as they attack. Um, everybody's moving around everywhere, and uh, it's really difficult to defend when you have that much movement. We'll see if they're doing the same thing here today. Some effort now pushes the ball in, and kind of, you know, just just as the last time kind of feeling each other out, um, just trying to push the ball in, using the long ball a little bit more as Aiden O'Hara tries to find Fabio Amaral. Back into Aiden O'Hara. He's in on goal, but off sides. I'm not so sure I agree with that, but it was definitely tight. It's a good look from, from Fabio Amaral to find Aiden O'Hara. Kind of through ball. Um, to f to free him, uh, you know, right right past his mark as he went over to Fabio, and that's uh, going to be a foul called. It'll be a village's free kick, first free kick of the night, beyond midfield. So uh, Brevard SC will trot on back to defend. And villages work their way out from the back. Little dummy faked his own man out. Rosano just got enough of it to, to keep control, but good ball in. Good stop there from Josh Fox to, to stop that cross from getting through, but give up a corner kick in the process. So corner kick here to the Villages, first set piece of the night. One corner for the Villages. It will be interesting to see what, what adjustments were made here on the set pieces. Uh, in our first game, no one scored off the set set piece, but there were yeah. definitely some holes Bre we saw. Brevard did. The second goal was a corner kick. That that's right. Sam Sam over to uh, to Nathan for the goal. And a high corner to the far post. Good header into the near post, but nobody reacting to it on the yellow. And uh, Brevard SC gets it half cleared. Bill just trying to turn. And now retreating. Out of bounds it goes. That'll be a throw in. Yeah, so that <laughs> definitely an opportunity. That I assume that was what they were trying to do. The, the far post headed into the near post. So there were three yellow shirts standing there, but nobody moved to it. It's almost as if, like, the, the rest of the team was caught off guard there. Like, wait, what? Yeah, you're not supposed to be on those set pieces, but it's straight up header there from Josh Fox. Not out of play yet, and No Hawkins gobbles that one up. And Brevard SC will work out of the back. Brevard SC, by the way, in the white shirts, if you haven't figured that out by, by now, moving from right to left, and Villages in the yellow from left to right. Ball coming out here to Nathan Mefford, but can't quite keep control of it on the byline or excuse me, the, the touch line and uh, out of bounds it goes. Villages throw. And Munch makes the throw back to Munch, making a nice run down the right side here. Unlucky defense there from uh, Miles Lockridge, but Brevard able to get it half cleared again. Villages now controlling, driving on the far side. Good defensive play there from Gene Lewis. Showing that energy in the defensive role this time. Long ball blocked. It'll be out for a goal kick. Hawkins last game had some phenomenal saves. Uh, when I was going back and doing, doing the highlights, it was funny watching some of the one-handed saves where he was able to get just enough of it. Yeah, but I mean, made it look spectacular. And we got a nice ball down the far side here. Uh, Fabio 
just can't quite get to it. And uh, Andre just clears it out. Aiden O'Hara with the throw here. Now Aiden's actually playing the left side. Gene's on the right. Trying to confuse you, Matt. Tell you, they're going to rotate. They're going to move around. But I, th I think that's, you know, Gene generally will play on the right. Aiden, when I watched him play for Melbourne High, he was mainly a striker. But uh, the speed is definitely fitting of a winger. To me, it's just so awesome to see, you know, Brevard, Brevard County have finally having a semi-pro team and, and seeing a lot of that former Brevard County talent that we have, you know, now getting to, you know, on the worldwide level. And a great ball down the far side. And Morrow able to stay on sides with greatly great timed run, trying to beat Nas Lockridge. I think Nas got a little piece of that, and that'll go out for a corner kick, second corner kick for uh, the Villages here. So, uh, but yeah, that was, that was a great time run and a great ball landed right at his feet and able to, to easily control it at top speed and, and, and move in for, for a chance there from the villages. So corner kick coming in. We'll see if that same far post to near post routine is utilized. Seven at the far post, but headed away there. I believe that was Nathan Mefford. And it will be. Looks like a throw in. I had the post block in my vision yeah, there, but no, it's a throw in. Ref uh, referee didn't give any signal. Fakes the cross. Comes back tomorrow, out of bounds. That'll be a Brevard SC throw. Tomorrow had uh, defenders on his back. <laughs> he might have been looking for a foul there, but definitely would have been ticky-tack in that situation. And Mefford up with the throw for Brevard. And there's there's an example of that rotation. You know, talking about uh, you know Brevard SC. You know, Fabio Amaral coming all the way up to the striker spot, the inside the 18 defensive spot to receive a throw in. Um, you know, these guys are moving all around the field, and, and when your striker gets th that low, you know, can draw those center backs in and open up things for the wingers, and that rotation can be tough to handle. Makes that defense really communicate. Out of bounds it goes for another Brevard throw. Took a couple extra yards there. <laughs> another Brevard SC throw. That'd be Amaral. Able to control it off his chest, but knocked away there. And uh, looks like Fabio being the favorite target here. As he now checks back to the ball. And goes over to Hernando Zaccari. Called for the foul. We'll have a free kick here for the Villages. to the far side. Half block there. And the fullbacks for the Villages getting somewhat high up the pitch, which can open them up for a counter in a situation where you turn it over in the midfield like that. But Brevard just not able to push it forward quick enough. And back to the back line. Back to Josh Fox, over to Niles Lockridge. And there's that rotation again. Kevon Reginer coming back to handle the ball. Long ball coming in. Tiepo controlling in his box. Out to Andre. Assuming that's Laro. I'd like to welcome everyone here watching on the broadcast. Please let us know where you're watching from, who you're cheering for. Shout outs, shout outs to your athletes. We are an interactive broadcast, and we will get to your comments periodically throughout the match. Some good pressure on Viega there from, uh, from Sam Bailey. Now Village is driving now. 
Munch on the far side. Again, it's creeping forward from that outside back position, getting into the attack. Great ball out to Aiden O'Hara, who's now running down the left side here. Ronaldo wanted the ball, not receiving it and upset about that, and now turned over to the Villages as they're now running down the near side. Great ball coming in on the outside, driving now. Numbers inside, touched away. Great save. Nas Lockridge got a piece of that. Just, just slowed the attack down enough, slowed that ball coming in enough. Straker had to reset the feet, and uh, Noah Hawkins comes up with a great save. Watching Hawkins, it was almost reminding me of watching uh, Alvy, just, just, just those amazing <laughs> saves. Great defensive play there from, uh, from Nathan Mefford, and forward it goes, just cleared. And uh, Fabio Amaral wanted it at his feet. Bill just take control again. And uh, I'm not sure what the whistle's for. I have my head down. Oh, player player down at the post blocking me again. Number 10, uh, Morrow, is, is down for the Villages SC here in the uh, – they're attacking third. Provide Sports Network policy. We do not show injuries, nor do we speculate injuries. We like to uh, welcome Grayson – I cannot pronounce an last name, and I'm not going to butcher that. Who is supporting the Villages from West Palm? Grayson E. Yes. We'll yeah. just go with that. Yes. I'm not, like I said, I'm, <laughs> I'm not on here to insult anybody, and I cannot pronounce the last name, so I'm not going to do it injustice by. And uh, good news for the Villages. Mara's up on his feet and walking. We got John Mari Hawkins <laughs> watching from England. Supporting uh, Noah Hawkins. A couple of uh, Brits on this team here. Sam Bailey as well. Matthew Werner, you're not lying. That was nearly one nothing <laughs> for, for the villi <laughs> for the villages. That 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 was that that was beautifully designed too. Noah Hawkins doing it what he does and making great saves. Ball in here to Fabio. He's got, ooh, not much space. Uh, center back comes out and, and makes a great, great play there. It was uh, a Lara, I believe, with the stop. And I'll uh, try and learn the, the Villages players' names here as we go along. And Zakiri turns and gets fouled. Takes it quickly. Opportunity there, their losses. I don't know that uh, Fabio Amaral was quite ready for the ball as it came in quickly. And uh, Villages take control off their back line. Andrade over Viega and then over to Lauro. Over to Whittier. Back to Lauro. Back to Viega. Whittier making a run down the far side now, having his turn to get into the attack. Niles Lockridge. Only a half clearance now. Villages, again, with that same little underlap. And uh, that's going to go out for a corner. I think. And uh, Josh Fox arguing that he got the first head and the second head was off the Villages, but. Uh, either way, it's going to be a corner <laughs> kick. I don't have instant replay to make the argument. It was uh, definitely close. And Munch with his uh, left foot going to take this free kick for the Villages. And headed clear. Sorry, that's Morrow. I was wondering why the right back has a left foot. That would make more <laughs> sense that it would be Morrow, the right winger. I'll learn it all. Another half clearance there. and Now all the way back to Noah Hawkins. Over to 
Now it's Lockridge. Trying to find Aiden O'Hara. Good challenge there from behind. And a little touch in the box there, but that would certainly be harsh. He went down very easy there, did Morrow, as he drove into the box. Got a little bit of contact from Nathan Mefford and uh, feeling just that touch goes down very easily as the ball's running out the byline. I think he knew that he had a heavy touch there and just decided he was better off just to try and get something. Yeah. Hey. We know all we, – we, 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 we've definitely seen that work in someone's favor. More than once. <laughs> <laughs> Ball out into the midfield now. The Villages taking over. Numbers coming in here for the Villages. Morrow now with the ball here on the near side. Taking on Nathan Meffert. Nathan Meffert with a great touch, great challenge to push the ball out, I believe. Oh, no, it is going to be a goal kick. Great challenge from Nathan Meffert, pushing the ball right back into Morrow's feet and out for the cor uh, excuse me, for the goal kick. Got Lauren Reed supporting from Tampa. We got Jen saying, let's go Buffalo, watching from Montana. I found out just this week there are Buffalo in Ocala. I did not know that until this week. There's a, a state park that has buffalo. Wait, are you serious? I'm dead serious. I didn't find it out till this week, and then I, th I always thought that the Villages was a lion and then saw, oh, wait a minute, that's a buffalo. So that's, that's what they're named after. That's awesome. And I, f I, I feel the need to make a trip to Ocala <laughs> just to see this, just to see the buffalo. Villages controlling. Foul, foul there. Getting pulled back and the yellow card coming in and that's uh, I believe Josh Fox getting called for the yellow card there and, and you know certainly a, a good tactical foul but deserving of the yellow card you know he's if he if he doesn't do give that uh, give that little tug and uh, the attacker gets by there's nobody in behind him except for wide and uh, then you got a 2v1 3v2 going in. T take your chances on a free kick let, 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 and give yourself a better yeah. opportunity. That's a tough spot to, to get a, a set-piece win there. But uh, now they have to defend it. I, I, I'd almost compare that to, like, American football. It's better to get the pass interference, allow your defense a chance to make the stop, rather than giving up the touchdown yeah, on, a, on a deep pass. There's that saying in defense, the man can get by, the ball can get by, but never both. Exactly. Number 11 there. Good head. Great head back and another great save there. Noah Hawkins with two big saves off set pieces. And uh, another half clearance here from Brevard. Village is still controlling. Munch down the right side. Tries to cross it in, but Nas Lockridge able to get that away, and that'll be out of bounds for a goal kick. And so another great save. That's two great set-piece saves there from Noah Hawkins. Again, doing what he does. Now, he hasn't been challenged like he did in Florida Elite with those outside blasts, but the inside six-yard pokes, he has been all over tonight. He'll put his left through, foot through this one. Only yellow shirts in the area as Witter takes over. And the village is controlling again. And, you know, villages seem to be controlling most of the possession here tonight. They've had some set piece chances. So Bre Brevard's going to have to get on the ball a little bit, uh, a little bit better. I mean, they've, they've been able to counter fairly effectively. Um, uh, Aiden O'Hara had a couple of good opportunities. One of them called offside. Um, and that, that's what it's really about, getting getting all those chances and then finishing. So uh, Villages had two great opportunities. Saved by Hawkins. Still no shots on target yet for Brevard. A little shove there, no call. Kimbon Regine trying to win it in the midfield, but... All yellow shirts around him, foul called. And we'll have a free kick for Brevard SC.
Big Niles Lockridge going in to uh, handle the air attack for Brevard. And Sam Bailey over the ball. Saw him with some amazing corner kicks in that last game. Those low, hard line drives. We'll see him probably loop this one in a little bit more. And he does, but uh, right into the hands of Tiepo. And he's coming out quickly with a 1v1 deep, recognizing that uh, that opportunity. But Sam Bailey gets back, controls it back to Noah Hawkins. Now as Lockridge gets forward to control, but that's a handball there, spotted by the referee. I thought he blew the whistle. And he does, does now, if he didn't before. A little extracurricular going on there with Rosano and several others now joining. Come on, we, we, we don't need this. And uh, getting heated all over the middle of the pitch right now. You expect to see a card come out here, but there would be a – maybe not because there would have to be a bunch of them, it seems. Just uh, get it under control and get us back underway. I, I didn't see who started it or, or it anything anything major come out of it. Just just a lot of a lot uh, of banter back uh, and forth. Uh, uh, someone from the Buffalo got got bumped in the back a little bit. I didn't think it was anything too much, but at the same time, you know, you know, as a player, sometimes you get the competitive juices fl flowing a little bit, and you know, sometimes there's more in there than you think, too, or that you see. Agreed. You know, yeah. The dark arts of this sport. <laughs> but uh, regardless, uh, I didn't see any cards. See some conversation going on the far side. P -p possibly. We'll, we'll see if something else comes out here for based on the ARs and the fourth official's uh, view. P possibly like a, a double warning kind of possibly w yeah. talking to both coaches saying, hey, tell your players, well, calm down. The, a the AR is talking to the center right now like he saw something and at least making him aware that, hey, you got to watch this guy, you got to watch that guy, and then it will be up to him to decide if he's going to throw a card out or not. You know, if somebody was to do something uh, egregious, the card would come out if the AR was able to spot that. <laughs> he's got a long list of felonies that he's rattling off to the center right yeah. now, it looks like. I'd like to welcome uh – Marchio Roberto, uh, watching from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Sao Paulo. I'd like to welcome Mike. Fabio Amaral, I assume, and probably a couple other Brazilians. There's a couple Brazilians on the Villages team as well, I think. I'd like to welcome Mike, uh, Matt Bennett. Thank you, How's guys. Going, Matt? Thanks for making Brevard Sports Network and the USL2 part of your sports night. Did a yellow card come out there? Just for the villages? Well, now he's walking with the yellow in his hand. So it looks like he's heading towards uh, Kevon Renier. Yep, and uh, Kevon will have a yellow as well. And did you see the number? Was it 21? Oh, there was two cards to the Villages. Okay, so number number nine for the Villages, that's Rosano, striker with a yellow card now, and number 11 now getting a card as well. Um, and then I did not see, there's apparently three yellows for the Villages, unless he's taken one back, I, I don't know, it's hard to say at this point. But at least three yellow cards shown, Kavan Regine, uh, number 11, Ferrer for the Villages, and Rosano. And the ball comes in just – I was looking down. All I saw it, was the, the goalkeeper catching it. Uh, the opportunity there off off the uh, the free kick. Just couldn't time it up right. Looked like Aiden O'Hara was right there. Just didn't didn't get a foot it, to it, I guess, huh? He He, he, he just missed it. And uh, Morrow now retreating. For the villages. Tiepo under pressure. On uh, on Tiepo's la last save, 
Uh, one thing I, I loved about that save, he went up and he high pointed that ball, and and and, and that's something that I feel goes underappreciated for, for for a goalie is the ones to, willing to get in there and and jump over everybody. Yeah, in, in traffic as yes. a goalkeeper, you have to. You're not you're not a goalkeeper at this level if you're not willing to go up there and make those plays. It's just it's got to be in your DNA to want to go up and get every ball. Bill just now again playing out of the back. Andre now under pressure goes all the way back to Tiepo under pressure from Fabio. Long ball out, losing out to Nathan Mefford. Aiden O'Hara now. With the ball a couple little chips away from him, trying to get the ball to Sam Bay Lee, and now foul called. Foul called on the Villages. It'll be a Brevard ball. Brevard free kick. Still pretty heated in there. Everybody's yeah. arguing uh, about kicks and contact and studs. and. But regardless, Sam Bay Lee is going to be standing over this ball, putting his right foot through another one, and um, – I bet Aiden O'Hara is wanting wanting another opportunity, and uh, Nas Lockridge running in, but but late to the party, and uh, Sam gets another one blocked there, gets his arm up just just to shield and a little high and into the face of Ferreira, but inadvertent bad bad ball out from from Noah Hawkins, but and a shot Ooh. goes wide. Shot goes wide, and uh, Brevard get uh, get free from what could have been a great opportunity. That's the first mistake I've seen Noah Hawkins make in the two games I've watched him here, and uh, that one could have been a bad one. Almost gave yes. one up, and uh, it could have been a, fa a foul there going in. There was definitely contact, but uh, referee played on, and the shot went wide. Gene Lewis trying to fight for the ball and. Now Kevon Reginer with the ball. Great job. Great footwork there in the middle of the field to try and get the ball over to Sam Bailey. And uh, another free kick here is Kevon Reginer will uh, take the kick here for Brevard. Matt Shelton and Caleb Brown here with you live from MCC. And long ball lost footing. Into Zakiri trying to find... And Fabio Morale there on the left side. Great job from Kevin Rigenet. Now driving down the left side. And out from Morrow. Ooh, balls calls, calls it out on, on Brevard. And um, could have called the foul as both legs were tied up in that tackle as well. I, actually, when he blew the whistle, that's what I thought he was going to call. And good pressure in here. The kick comes out. That's going to go out of bounds. Good pressure there from Fabio Morale. Forcing the quick kick out of bounds, and Nathan Mefford will step up for the throw here. High up the pitch for Brevard. Fabio Morale with a nice back heel over to Gene Lewis, was trying to find Ronaldo Zakiri, but uh, only found yellow shirts. And now driving and contact there made, and... Uh, Foul called again, and Ferreira, who's on a yellow card, now definitely has to be careful. And uh, Zakiri's lipping a little bit, but he look, looks like he's going to get on with it. And uh, Sam Bailey over the ball for another Brevard free kick. So into this stiff wind here, we've got a, a really strong kind of northeast wind, at least through this window it appears to be northeast. So kicking into this wind here towards the goal. And uh, Niles Lockridge taking up residence on the far side at the 18. Village is holding the line at the 18. And uh, Noah Hawkins with his gloves off as he's tying his shoes. I don't know if the referee, I guess the referee did spot. He seems to be holding up for him. 
Good ball in. Too high. Tiepo gives a little shove to Niles Lockridge and boots the ball downfield again, seeing that 1v1 matchup at the back. And uh, Sam Bailey again getting in there, doing the dirty work on the defense to clean it up. I love that aggressive long ball there by, by Tiepo. He, he sees it, he, and he's going to keep going at it until Brevard makes the adjustment. Well, I mean, Brevard's on a set piece. They're pushing their men forward. You gotta, when you have a set piece like that and you're betting your big man forward – that he's going to get his head on the ball. When it doesn't happen, yeah, you're going to get those counters. And and uh, the the midfielder sitting in front of the striker for Brevard, um, you know, when that ball goes over the top, now you're 1v1. There's a handball from he, Gene Lewis. He, he, he knew it as soon as it happened. Yeah, I don't know if the ref caught it. He's going to throw in. May, maybe it was already out. It was kind of on its way out when it struck his hand. Either way, Bill will just throw in here. Andre over to Laro. Laro to Viega. Viega trying to find Santos, but uh, Ronaldo Zakiri gets to it. Trying to find just <laughs> Fabio Morales just can't quite get to it. I mean, the, vill the Village's center backs are doing a good job staying central and not letting those attacks come through. A good ball across, but a little, just a little too high for Fab Fabio's head, and the Villages are off again here on the near side. But losing out. Rare missed touch there from Sam. And the uh, Villages will take over in their back again. Nobody pressuring and free runner here on this near side. Morrow running down the right. Another good ch good chest. Cleaned up very nicely from Nathan Mefford. It was a great ball all the way across the field. You know, that was probably a 60-yard ball right to his run on time. Great ball, and uh, Nathan Mefford did a good job just to get in there and clean it up. So throw in here for the Villages. About. No, good, another good tackle there from Efford. Went off of the Village's player. It'll be out of bounds for Brevard throw. About 33 minutes into the first half of play. Uh, we don't have a clock up on the graphic. That was a free kick there. And uh, Fabio Morale, in my opinion, rightly so, is saying he ran into the Brevard player. There really wasn't anything there, but he certainly made the most of it. Um, Regardless, so we got a free kick here for the Villages. It, it seemed like he basically ran into the, the Brevard player. Not much in it from my perspective, but again, no instant replay, and I'm not on the field. But it looks like Morrow will be standing over this one with his left foot. Thirty yards out from goal, not a bad spot for for a direct kick. I mean, this is not too far from the opposite side of the field where we saw the one goal go in on Nathan Hawkins last week. So we'll see what Morrow has to offer on this free kick. Goes for the cross and headed out of bounds for a goal kick. Good defensive play there from Morrow to stop the, the ball from Sam Bailey and foul called. Take it quickly. A little bit of a mistouch, but out wide here. And another foul called as Witter tries to drive on the far side there. And uh, handball is what I'm being told. So again, another great opportunity here. This one favors the right foot. A 
Got Steve Mefford tuning in saying, let's go. And I assume this one's going to be indirect. It was a handball without possession. We approach the 36th minute of half number one. Nope, direct kick. <laughs> and the right foot goes high and over the bar. No problems for that one. A goal kick here for Brevard. Hawkins is going to put his left foot through this one again. Into the middle of the pitch. And uh, Villages again first to the ball. They've been doing a really good job uh, being first to, to the balls as they're, the long balls as they're coming through the midfield. And Mefford losing out on speed, but just able to get his body into him enough to slow him down, get him off balance, and then get his foot to it. And Brevard's off with Gene Lewis here on this near side. And uh, Gene Lewis now on the left side, Aiden O'Hare on the right. Again, that, that movement on this team. A little miss hit there from, from Noah Hawkins again. Come on over to Sam Bailey. Good long ball in. Aiden O'Hare trying to run into it as is. Fabio Amaral, but uh, corralled by our goalkeeper from the Villages, Tiepo. And good pressure here coming in from Gene Lewis, but great ball out to find Munch on this near side as he's driving now down this near side. Finds Morrow in the middle, over to Serrano, and then over to Butler. Butler trying to find his right foot here. Good ball across, and then touch. Is he onside? He is onside goal from Oscar Rossano. Just a little touch to redirect it right past No Hawkins and uh, Oscar Rossano with the first goal here for the Villages. 1-0, Villages up on Brevard SC here in the 39th minute. So the uh, the attacks from the villages, you know, by my count, I've got six shots, three on goal, and uh, one in goal. So that's the most important stat. And uh, that one in goal, the difference in the game here, one nil. And Brevard SC tries to go through Gene Lewis here, trying to find the head with the head to uh, Fabian Morrell. Nathan Mefford over to Kevon Regine, over to Niles Lockridge, back to Noah Hawkins. A goal coming Klaus. in at the uh, 38 and a half ish minute. Uh, it was just just before 38. I have oh, it. Oh, okay, my bad. So. Uh, Winning out on the far side there. Ball coming in. Ferreira with the shot. Deflected but can't keep a hold of it. And then a, a very poor shot on the on the second opportunity there from Butler. Decent shot from Ferreira, but right at Noah Hawkins, who, who can't control it, pushes it out right back into the middle of the field, and uh, Butler can't get a good strike to it to get it by him. Morrow's able to keep it in again. Nathan Mefford able to keep pace with him. And you see uh, Fabio Amaral doing the dirty work as a striker deep in his defensive area on the left side here. 
You now you see Gene Lewis rotating up to the striker position. I'll be out of bounds for a villager's throw. Long throw in, good defensive play there from Sam not to let the turn. Ball comes all the way across, but out of bounds. That'll be a Brevard throw. Just letting uh, everyone know at halftime, we do mute the mics and we put up a little halftime graphic. Uh, we don't have any halftime entertainment for you, but it's not your device. We, we mute the mic at halftime. And a, a foul from behind there on Kevon Regine, but... Uh, Getting a card for that one. And uh, that is his second yellow. So Brevard SC will be running down a man for the rest of the game. I didn't see the red card come out. Yeah, he, he did. It it did. As soon as you went down to mark the yellow. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so Brevard SC will be playing the rest of this game with 10 men. And not a whole lot in that, honestly, but um, – Cer certainly, if he wasn't on a yellow, I would never expect, never, um, you know, argue that it was worth, wasn't worthy of a yellow. But two yellows, two fouls. I, I, I want to say when when, it, when you talk about putting someone out of out of the game and and having a team play man down, I feel there's there's got to be a little more into that if you're gonna. Yeah, it's 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 a little bit harsh, but again, but again, I mean, if 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 that's any other point in the game where he doesn't have a yellow card, I would not, you know, I would. Agree with that wholeheartedly, but a little, little harsh as a second yellow. But ball coming in, left-footed strike for Mar over the bar. So we'll see if if Coach Adrian Moreno makes any changes. Um, you know, he's a, a midfield player, um, so we still have our core four back. But down a goal, eh, probably not much you can do to change at this point. You can't. Go defensive. You need to stick with the attack. Um, can they get forward? Can they get a counter? And Village is coming forward now with numbers. Ball coming across. Strike hits the bar. Goaltender's best friend. Rosano, our goal scorer with the first goal, almost gets a second there as uh, the bar caroms off the crossbar out of bounds for a goal kick. So right right away, you see the gap in the middle of the field there left by Regine, and uh, they'll just take that as an opportunity. Now Fabio trying to control the ball, but out of bounds. We'll have another Brevard throw in here. and Nathan Mefford, the ball in his hands to take the throw. W.M. a little foul there. Foul there called. Foul against Ronaldo Zakiri. And uh, number 11, he's on a yellow as well with fouls mounting. Great ball in. W.R. Renal out of bounds. Brevard throw high up the pitch. Nathan Mefford probably looking for his favorite target on these throws. Fabio Amaral, anywhere on the pitch, he's been looking for him. And now working the ball in the corner, able to get it out. But uh, that looks like it's going to be a village's throw. Deep in their own defensive third. Flick into Sam Bailey and out of bounds for a Villagers throw. And Nathan Mefford disagreed, but that's all right. Still a Villagers throw. <laughs> We're now and in. Find Amara down the right side here. Niles Lockridge plays the ball back to the center to his goalkeeper who clears it up the middle again. 
Now in 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 added Not time much territory. in that. <laughs> just just ever such a slight touch there from Fabio Amaral and uh, the Villages player goes down and the foul is called. And we'll have a free kick here for the Villages. Serrano plays it out wide to Witter. Oh, they did, they did call offsides on it. Okay, it was a it was a pretty weak touch. That's for sure. And as Caleb said, we are, you know, a minute into extra time, out of time here in the first half. Village is up 1-0 over Brevard SC here at Melbourne Central Catholic. Driving in here, the Village is on the byline, cuts it back. And Butler not able to get his foot squarely to it. Out of bounds it goes. It'll go for a corner. I believe that was Josh Fox getting, getting his foot to it and deflecting it out of bounds. So one more corner, one more opportunity here for the Villages. Uh, by my count, it's their fourth corner. May have lost track, but it well, seems about right. You, you had two, two of them over there. Yeah. And Mars' left foot's going to push this one in. Everybody near the far post. And first to it is Fabio Amaral, but Villages take control just outside their box. And a uh, negative pass may end this. And referees letting it go. We did have that long conversation that resulted in the four yellow cards. And in, in over two minutes of added time now. Gene Lewis forcing the ball wide. Driving now towards the middle of the field. Skier doing a good job to uh, to turn Munch back. Miles Lockridge getting high up the pitch from his center back spot. Zakir taking over, trying to use his footwork to get through three. And now the village is attacking. Ooh, Ferreira. Had Rosano with the through ball on the right side, opted to shoot, shot it right in to his defender. And now Gene Lewis on the far side, trying to win out. He's held on the far side. Foul call. I'm not, I don't understand that. The, the player was on the ground swiping at, at Gene, and, the, and they called a foul on Gene. I, I'm not sure what happened there. That AR was in a good position. Now the ball coming in, Ferreira over tomorrow. Onto his right foot. He wants his left, though, and offsides. And that should do it, or pretty close to do it. He's on looking at his watch. Got to think we're close. And he keeps looking at his watch. So I, I have a feeling it's uh, – at 49, we'll stop, which is two seconds from now. Ball may be the last ball kicked. Goal kick here for Noah Hawkins. And that will be the last ball kick. So after the first half, Brevard SC with 10 men on the field, down one goal, one nil to the villages here at MCC. All right, again, folks, uh, nothing's wrong with your devices. We mute the mics during halftime so we can get a drink. And I'll be singing. You just don't want to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> I played the fifth. All right, we'll be back in about 15 minutes with the second half action right here on the Brevard Sports Network.
And welcome back here to the Brevard Sports Network Live from Melbourne Central Catholic. And our presentation of USL 2. As we get set to start the second half here. Halftime just ended. And uh, the Buffalo are up 1-0 over Brevard FC. Yeah, Villages get on the board through Oscar Rosano's goal. Um, with the red card from Kavan Regine. There's a, a change, so we do have uh, number 17, Brock Schultz, coming on for Gene Lewis. So he'll move into the midfield. We'll have, I'm assuming, two attackers with Aiden O'Hara and Fabio Amaral up top to keep the three in the midfield. So we, we have the this, this strong presence there. And then Nathan Pless coming in for Nathan Mefford at the left back spot. And Bill just start the ball off here. Again, playing with a man advantage. And yeah, it looks like they, they do go to two up top. Um, and a uh, foul called. It'll be a Brevard free kick. Niles Lockridge over the ball. Good kick coming out. It gets through, but not all the way through. Aiden O'Hara tries to push it back in, but cleared out the side. Nathan Pless gets his first touch of the game. And not a great pass over to Niles Lockridge. Right in the middle of the field into a dangerous area. Offsides is the call as Butler he was in free to goal, but because he was off sides, apparently. It was a great ball into him. Um, it was good recognition of that pass coming in from Nathan Pless into that danger zone and, and jumped on that interception. Did, uh, I guess it was, uh, was it Ferreira uh, for the Villages? But uh, offside stops the attack. Free kick for Brevard here. And over, over the back, either way, but that'll be a, a throw in here as Aiden O'Hara with the ball in his hands for Brevard. High up the pitch. Finds a carry, a little elbow to the face there. No call, though. Good tackle there from Nathan Pless. Out of bounds for a village's throw. Good little give and goes up the sideline there from uh, Whittier and Butler. But Nathan Plus does a good job to stop that attack. So we're, we're seeing, I mean, a big difference from the first and second half here. Uh, no long balls now. They're, they're content to, to move the ball with those extra players through the midfield. And, and now, you know, having time and space You know, Rivard's going to have to sit in, sit in a little deeper and, and try to counter. And it looks like um, that's, what, that's what they're trying to do with uh, really three center backs now. Um, and then they'll get Nathan Pless moving up the field. And I guess it's um, is, uh, Klaus as well. Yeah, now they... Give more of a four-back look now. And up a goal, up a man. Bill just content to just kind of possess the ball here and let Brevard chase. We're now driving in the middle and finding Viega in the middle. Back out to Moinch. 
Looks, took a little deflection there. And that's going to be out of bounds for a corner kick. The ball was coming in right at the near post. And uh, Noah Hawkins just slaps at it to get it away. And out of bounds will be a corner kick here. Village is not in any great hurry. And I believe that's Ferreira over the ball for the Villages. That ball is not on the line. And curled to the byline. Looks like Niles Lockridge gets head to it first. We'll have another corner kick over to the far side. And Santos waiting for the short, receives it. Left foot coming in. Headed clear from Johannes Klaus. And we'll have a village's throw. And again, village is not looking to go into the numbers. Good ball in here. Nas Lockridge is drawn out. And uh, Rosano tried to play the, the ball in there to Butler and, and just good, good marking, not able to get his foot to it. And now off to the races, but this pass there and Mara was able to recover. Doing good work there from the wing position, getting back and recovering, stopping what could have been a good counter there for Brevard. Klaus now working on the far side on the defense. Out of bounds, and a villages throw. <laughs> Good defensive play with the villages on themselves there almost. And now ball turned over. Now it's Lockridge with the ball in the back. Over to Nathan Pless. Aiden O'Hara looking for the give and go. It's a good tackle. Well, foul called. Got a little bit of the man as he went through for the ball, it looks like. And uh, free kick here for the Villages. From 40 yards out. Short ball to Santos. Back to Viega. Back to Andrade. Mora with the ball, gives it up to Ferreira. Ferreira now turning. Back out tomorrow. Back to Ferreira, back tomorrow. He wants the left foot across. Coming in all the way. Across on Butler with the right foot over the bar. We'll have a goal kick here for Brevard. So by my count, we've got 10 shots with five on target here for Villages. Only one shot for Brevard. And now a man down here in the second half. It's uh, going to be tough to get additional shots, much less goal. And Villages player there in the middle going down again. And, and now numbers forward for Villages. Nas Lockridge going out and trying to meet up with Morrow as he runs down the far side over to his right foot. Great shot with the right foot. Number 10, Morrow, who's left-footed. Great shot in the bottom right corner. Nothing he could do. And Noah Hawkins just can't get to it. And uh, Villages up 2-0 here in the 54th minute for, for the, the second goal. Like you said, nothing he could do. Just great job there by the Villages. Just taking advantage. Yeah, down a man, you know, there's there's not a, a whole lot you can do 
to uh, to try and get numbers up opportunities as uh, you know in the white shirts here, you know to to attack and if you do you're really giving up numbers behind. Um, but yeah, Morrow, you know, got a great little through ball there on the far side and uh, just kept driving against Niles Lockridge. 1v1 opportunity and, and takes a shot and scores. And Morrow again on the ball here. You had Butler looking to make the run. Butler turns. Nathan Pless gets a touch, but not enough as Butler runs by him. Ball into the middle now. Rosano plays it wide. Over to Munch. Munch brings the ball in. Knocked out by Josh Fox. Now Aiden O'Hara on the right side. Fabio Amaral. Plays it back to Sam ba Bailey. An errant pass there. Just, I think he was trying to, uh, to find Fabio Morale on that one. Nas Lockridge knocks it right back into the Villages player and back to Noah Hawkins. Who clears, but... Only Villages players home down here on our right side. And uh, again, no rush to push forward, just finding open space, time and space. And now uh, Fabio Amaral having to, to put some pressure on. And if, uh, if they have any chance of getting back in this game, Brevard's going to have to start moving and sprinting at that ball up top or they'll end up just passing around that back four. It is pronounced Andrade. Uh, Andrade? Uh, Andrade. Um, Thank you for that. The, the center back there for the Villages. Thank you. Andrade. Is that a Brazilian pronunciation then? Is he Brazilian? Um, not sure. <laughs> uh, we we got the correction from uh, Matthew Matthew Werner, so we we, we do thank you for that. We we do appreciate that. We 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 try to get these names right. And uh, we were told his family is watching. And thank you Are for they the, the Sao Paulo family. Well, sorry for the mispronunciation. We'll try and get it right here. I have my son's. Coach was from Colombia and it was Andrade. Same spelling. And uh, Village is driving here on the far side. It looks like it went out of bounds. And we'll have a throw in here for Brevard. We got a yes. Uh, I, I believe confirmed piece from from Brazil. Okay. Brazil. We were talking about that before the broadcast here, you know, trying to get some of these names. In order to pronounce it right, you need to know where they're from. And I am not a linguist. But, you know, that, that's why I'm glad we're an interactive broadcast. <laughs> you know, it, it, listen, we're, we're not afraid to say, look, we, you know, we may have messed up. Please help us. First time I saw these names was 10 minutes before the broadcast. So I'm going to make mistakes. But uh, Bill just have a free kick here in your midfield. And Santos gives it up to Butler, who's fouled by Aiden O'Hara. And we'll have a free kick about 50 yards out. Santos over to Andrade. Good shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder battle here. I would not want to get into that shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder battle with Niles Lockridge, but he wins out as the ball comes in for a throw-in. Almost has an opportunity to come forward, but uh, Josh Fox able to nick it away, and they'll just take over again on the far side. Over
over to Butler here on the near side. Looking for the cross. And gets by Josh Fox, but not by Niles Lockridge. Gets a half clearance and now moving on the far side through Zakiri. And now the second goal scorer, Morrow, on the ball. Looking for the left foot. <laughs> Sam Bailey takes one in the chest. Gonna feel that one in the morning. And, and Morrow just does the sportsman thing and knocks the ball out as uh, Sam Bailey gets gets checked as that ball was just drilled into the midsection. Hopefully, just got the wind knocked out of him there. Thank, thank you guys. We 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 appreciate the kind words and. We, we, we honestly, we love doing this. We love getting to watch really. all, all this accumulation of talents come together and play a beautiful game. Yeah, like I said, if, if I wasn't sitting here in the booth, I'd be sitting in the stands down there <laughs> watching it. And uh, uh, just, just uh, we've said it so many times, but very happy that we've got uh, USL here in Brevard. And we do have some substitutes coming on. Looks like the first goal scorer, Rosano, is going off. We'll see if we can catch some numbers of players coming in here. No numbers on the fronts of the jerseys, making it difficult as they're walking on the field to see who's coming on. So we do have an 18. Eighteen would be Matias Ferreira. Uh, Fourteen would be Alvaro Carrera. Looks like uh, they have a little bit of a switch here. I thought maybe Ferrer was striker, and now he seems to be dropping more into the midfield position. The only one I saw go off was uh, Rosano, the striker for the Villages, and they're driving here again. Butler on the ball here. Good defensive play, and Niles Lockridge clears it away. Aiden O'Hara, he's got space on the right side. He goes middle. And then back to Josh Fox. Over Lockridge, back to Fox. Runners on the far side there. But uh, not able to find Fabio Amaral in the middle and foul called. We'll have a free kick here to the Villages. Also in for the Villagers, number three, Nicholas Latour. No, he's, he's been in the whole time. He's our left, the left back. Fox able to get a foot to it to stop that ball coming through. I keep looking at my paper, missing the action here. A good left foot from Morrow again. It was deflected out of bounds. It'll be a corner kick. And a corner kick here on the near side. And Lucas Morrow can put his left foot through this one. And finding a shot on the far side, but not challenging the goalkeeper over the bar it goes. That was Carrera's first touch. Getting under the ball a little bit and over the bar. Again, thank you guys for the continued kind words. And good win there from Ronaldo, but you now pulled back here. Opportunity here for Brevard, one of the 
few opportunities here in the first half as they have a set piece here from about 35 yards out right in the middle of the field. Um, you know, these straight on the set pieces. A um, little bit more difficult than the ones on the side, but still not a bad opportunity here. And long ball coming in, but only finds the yellow foot. Ronaldo tries to push it back in. It'll be a Brevard throw. And Niles Lockridge look for a long throw here from Niles. Josh Fox getting in the box. Goes to, to Josh Fox, gets a back heel. Fabio Morale with the left foot. Oh, my Good gosh. Good save there from the goalkeeper. Best chance of the night there. First shot on goal for Brevard. Off the long throw from Niles Lockridge. And uh, just a, a quick jet across the center of the box. <laughs> Drops the ball to the ground, almost losing, uh, losing out to uh, Ronaldo there. Good flick on header. He's off sides. Can't be off sides on a throw, but once it's touched. And uh, Bill just take over. Coming out of the back. We have someone saying uh, number 23 for the Villages has subbed in. And 20, 23 is uh, Austin Lukasik. Thank you, Jen, for for spotting that for us. Yeah, I I had heard that from uh, our uh, announcer here next to us. I just couldn't find his name on my roster. Thank you for that. And Bill just uh, controlling the ball here through the midfield. Numbers getting forward now. Back to Marr with a big left foot. That one goes wide and, and not challenging the goalkeeper much on that one. So goal kick here for Brevard. Out of bounds, that'll be a Brevard throw right around the midfield. Sam Bailey trying to take it quickly here. Out of bounds for another Brevard throw. See, Brevard's trying to get something going, but it's just, you know, you, you can see that that extra extra man that the Villages have advantage. Well, I mean, in the first half, even at full strength, yeah, the Villages, you know, had the lion's share of the possession, and um, Brevard weren't, weren't, weren't getting many opportunities. And now here, Aiden O'Hara with the ball. Driving here into the box. He's got two with him, and that one goes out of – no, not out of bounds. Stays in. Aiden Harrow with it again. That one goes out for a corner. And here we have an opportunity again for Brevard. And just as I say something. So, yeah, and when you're a man down, you know, the, the set pieces, that's where it all evens out. But you see Niles Lockridge coming in, and, and you're, you're betting all those men forward you need to when you're down two goals. Uh, these set pieces are very important. Um, you can capitalize here. You're back in the game. Currently approaching the 69th minute. And ball coming in. It's going to go over everyone, though, and out of bounds for a goal kick. So 
More substitutions coming in here for Brevard. So coming on the pitch for Brevard. Let's see if I can find him here. Uh, Kenshin Yasujima, number 15, coming on to the pitch for Brevard. Substitution for Brevard, number 15, Kenshin Yasujima, and number 26, Alvin Finnelon. And then the other substitution is... Uh, Number 26, Alvin Fenelon. He wasn't on my roster. That would answer that. Okay, so changing his number, that's why I couldn't find him. And the ball coming in there on the far side. And Yasujima gets his first touch now throw but right to the villages and Butler gets the ball wide here for the villages back tomorrow over to Santos over to Witter no excuse me that's uh, Laro And foul called. <laughs> the the AR calls the foul. The center referee, after he blows the whistle, kind of gave a shoulder shrug, like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and cross coming in. And Witter now on the ball. Tomorrow back to Witter. Back tomorrow. Back to Witter. Back tomorrow. Back to Laro. Back to Andrade. And offsides there is number 14. N no. Uh. That's Carrera, number 14 offsides on the play. Real late whistle. And ball coming in. And Yasujima fighting for that opportunity here for his third shot. And now out for the villages who are now driving with numbers four. That one's offsides as well. Flag goes up and Butler's off sides. As my papers go flying in the breeze here. A little free kick for the Brevard SC. And there are the villages to put an end to that little run. Taking control again here. Long ball. Carrera is on sides, but Noah Hawkins does a good job get it cleared. And uh, Bill just again went out in the midfield. Long ball. And offsides is the call. So that goal will not count. Yeah, there was a runner on the far side, and I guess Niles had to bend his run back to the middle for the offside player up the middle. Uh, usually referees will let that one go as long as that central player who was offsides doesn't get involved in the play. And 
Nas Lockridge gets up and over, but through the back of the Villagers player. And whatever the ball here on the near side. Carrera now driving, but right into Niles Lockridge. But Villa just take over again. Santos playing it back to Mara. Mara over to Witter again. Good left foot flick into on sides and then the cross. Beautiful play there. And I believe that was Santos on the goal. Uh, Witter to Butler to, I think, Ferreira to Santos for the goal. Great little passing play in tight spaces inside there. And 3-0 uh, here, the Village is rolling on Brevard. I believe it was Santos number five, yes. Goal for the Village is number five, Pedro Santos. That was uh, definitely a pretty little play as they uh, draw everybody to the near post and then just push it to the far post. Everybody was marked, marked as well, but um, it's too much to handle. Nas Lockridge driving on the far side, tries to get it to Yasujima. And flicking it on. For Brevard, number 14, Preston Price. Preston Price entering for Brevard SC. And Bill just taking back over again. As these new players come on, I'm going to be again learning names. Brock Schultz applying pressure there. Schultz, a uh, Holy Trinity product. And good run here from Witter on this near side. And Butler can't get the pass off, but does get to receive the ball back from Carrera, but deflects it back out, and Brevard take over. And uh, Brock Schultz with a little bit of errant touch there. Looked like it went off the player, Village's player. Referee in the center, I think, catches it. And yes, it goes to Brevard. AR on the near side calling into the Village's throw, but the center referee, I believe, correctly sees the deflection in uh, Brevard throw. And uh, more substitutes coming in for the Village's. And without numbers on the fronts of the shirts, it's difficult to catch as they come on. Jacob Fox, or Josh Fox, ready on the throw. And uh, Sam Bailey's going off. And number 16 coming on, that's uh, Jonas Schmidt. In for Brevard. For Brevard. Number 16, Jonas Schmidt. And uh, looks like. Uh, In for the village is number two, Roberto Yadrek. And Diedrich coming on for well. villages. And there's a new keeper, but I only have one goalkeeper on my roster. Nathan Pless now with the ball for Brevard. Finding Brock Schultz and a little handball. Called against number 14, Carrera. Uh, I believe there's uh, number 12 might be the new goalie. Uh, number 12 or number 2? A Andrew Muller? Mueller. And 
and that's the Brevard roster. Ah. The the goalkeeper came on for the villages. Good ball in, but first two it is the villages players, and then uh, out of bounds for goal kick. Alvin Fenelon. So throw deep in their own territory here for the villages. Crayer back to Witter. And good defensive play to stop the ball from coming out, but right back to the villages. Fox does a good job to slow down the counter. Forcing the ball across the field, and then it comes back across to the near side. Witter to Carrera, great through ball, but couldn't get a touch to it. Number 18, don't have a number here readily. 18 is uh, Ferrer. For the Villages. And Aiden O'Hara trying to get to the ball, out of bounds. And we'll have another village's throw. Laura over to Andrade. He turns back to his new and unnamed goalkeeper. Dietrich gets his first touch of the game. Andrade back over to Lauro. And Bill is certainly not looking to push the ball forward in a hurry here. And as I say that, they push the ball <laughs> forward in a hurry. And Butler able to get it back into the back line at their feet, but under pressure here from number 16. with the ball on the far side. Offsides is the call. And Brevard will take over again with Niles Lockridge. I expect this ball to go, well, I was going to say go long, but uh, with a player two yards away, go short. Basically, whatever I say here is just going to go the opposite for the rest of this game, I guess. And you're just continue on to <laughs> continuing on my trend. And... Uh, no, no pressure there from um, Yasujima. We're in about the 83rd minute of the match. Our next broadcast of the Brevard SC will be Sunday night. Right here again. Yeah. Is it Tampa Bay? Is that who they're playing? Uh, whole night in front of me. I, I, I have the schedule uh, here up. I just haven't found a good time to put it up. This is action. And Butler getting held there by uh, Josh Fox, but uh, pushes the shot wide. Here we are. Uh, yes, it is Tampa Bay. So Tampa Bay United fell to the Villages 1-0 in the Villages' only other game. And that'll be Brevard SC's next game on Sunday. So if you can't make it here at MCC, catch it on BSN. And uh, Brevard now taking over. Hayden O'Hara. Josh Fox started to make a run, but 
as the ball was falling back to the villages, retreats back to his center back position. Yeah, so 3 0 down at this point. Uh, very difficult, really, to get anything done, but certainly to come back three. Uh, with only six, seven minutes left to play. A little hit in the back there from Butler. And the whistle now being called. The foul. Not sure what advantage there was in delaying, but Nathan Pless with the ball now. Back to Noah Hawkins over to Niles Lockridge. And runners going long ball here from Niles Lockridge. Trying to find Aiden O'Hara. Schultz winning the ball there in the midfield. <laughs> Just trying to find some room. Able to control it there. And Contact, but no foul called. Ball comes out back to the Villages. Villages trying to get numbers forward here. Nice little flick for Morrow to get Santos. Actually, that's not Santos. That's uh, Ferreira. Free on the far side. With the right foot cross. Knocked away from Josh Fox. And Carrera just waiting in the middle for the next cross. Long ball over the bar. So shots mounting here for the Villages. By my count, they're at 16 shots. And uh, six on goal, three in goal. That's a nice percentage when you get yeah. half your shots. Half your shots on goal, in goal. Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. Half your shots on goal. Half the shots on goal, in goal. Not a, not a bad way to spend a day in the park. Brock Schultz winning the ball out here in the midfield. And now losing out again to the Villages players. And again, not in any rush to push forward. Brevard really not pressuring. Uh, so this game in the, now the 88th minute is going to start to wind down. And, um, you know, lessons to be learned here for, for Brevard. Um, I guess uh, knowing where you are in foul territory will be one is uh, – Kevon goes out with the red card early in the game. And, you know, Brevard pretty much chasing this game from the beginning, even full strength. And then uh, Bill just kind of making it look easy here with the extra man. And uh, really a good job from the Villages with movement off the ball. Nice, crisp passing, little short passes inside. Uh, creating some difficulty for the Brevard defenders all game. So opportunity to counter here. Aiden O'Hara trying to get to the ball here on the near side. Keeps it in almost. First touch gets the ball to hold it in, but can't get the second touch before it goes out. And the Villages take over again deep in their own territory here. As we approach the 90th minute. By the way, I, I do want to say great crowd on hand tonight. It you know and, and look we we saw some parents from the village you know village the villages make the trip over they they traveled well Brevard SC fans showing up good atmosphere tonight. Yeah, I mean the the stands are are definitely more than half full here on a Wednesday night. Um, so yeah. 
Good to see. Aiden O'Hara on side, streaking down the near side here. He's going to get to this one. He's got players in the box with him. Ball coming across. And uh, uh, Andrade pushes the ball out of bounds for a corner kick. We also like to thank every, everyone who's watched us tonight on, here on the Brevard Sports Network. Thank you for commenting, interacting, and helping us out. Corner coming in here for Brevard. Into the near post. Dangerous, but flicked away for Brevard throw. Niles Lockard stepping to it. This will be a long throw. Wants to change balls. That's Best right. opportunity they had all game was from a Niles Lockard's long throw. Another one coming in here right into the middle of the box, but headed away, and Carrera off to the races now. Brock Schultz does a good job to stop it, but now extra attacker on the far side. Nathan Pless, 3v1, and shuts it down. You, you don't get too many chances to win in a 3v1 situation as a defender. Great job from Nathan Pless just to stay in the passing lane, not let that ball come across to the two attackers in behind him, and uh, gets away with just a throw in. And that'll go out of bounds, corner kick. And we are into the 91st minute now, approaching the 92nd. I expect this whistle to come out as soon as this ball gets cleared. So corner kick on the far side for the Villages. Plays it short. Cross coming in. Chest from Carrera. Play back out to Witter, stolen there. And there is the whistle, and that's our game, folks. Three goals for the Villages. Uh, Rosano uh, and Mara and Santos with the goals for the Villages, 3-0. And uh, we said next game, TBU, uh, Tampa yep. Bay United, right here Sunday night at 7. Yes, right sir. here at MCC, right here on Brevard Sports Network. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to let, let everyone know uh, this game will be uploaded to YouTube late tonight. So for all of those who want to take highlights of, of whatever, feel more than more than welcome to. Again, later on tonight, it'll be up on uh, Brevard Sports Network's YouTube page. Take w whatever you would like from the Facebook feed. For Matt Shelton, I'm Caleb Brown. Thank you for joining us for Wednesday Night Soccer. See you Sunday night here on the Brevard Sports Network. Have a good night, y'all.